All right, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Save the Track Bike. Today's episode is a little bit different. I have Claire Prouse from Mission Crit and Katie Steyer from Oakland Bikes, which is a radio show based out of Oakland. And she's also an announcer for Mission Crit. And they're both on here to talk about women's cycling. Uh, We talk about the women's field at Mission Crit. We talk about inclusivity. Kind of took a step back in this episode. And yeah, we just let the conversation go. and, And I think it turned out really amazing. So I hope you guys enjoy it. My name is Claire Prouse. I am partners with James Grady in life and in the production of the Mission Crit uh, bike race in San Francisco. And my name is Katie Steyer. I am a uh, bike racer in the Bay Area, um, and I produce Oakland Bikes Radio. So I'm a longtime active member in the bike racing scene and cycling community in the Bay. And Katie is the one of the announcers for Mission Crit again this year. That's right. right. Second second year in a row. I'm pretty excited. She's good. We wanted her back. <laughs> I wanted to have you on today. Well, specifically, I contacted you, Claire, because uh, when I interviewed James, we were going to we recorded a little section about an announcement about um, a sponsorship and all that stuff. And then that specific one didn't end up going through. But um, for the women's field, you had Machines for Freedom come on and pay for half the women's uh, admission fee, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, Machines for Freedom is sponsoring the Mission Crit Women's Race this year, so this is allowing us to offer entries um, at $25 off to anybody who's racing in the women's field. And it was a, a last-minute switch, but we just went to them with uh, the opportunity, and they were, they were so eager. Um, we're really excited to be working with them. We think that it's a perfect fit, and it sounds like there are lots of women who are likewise stoked to have machines for freedom um supporting this year yeah it was so cool to see that news and i was immediately like oh we need to have claire back so we can actually talk about it this time (laughs) were you able to offer any discounts last year for women's reg also we did um we ran a promotion last year just just through mission crit which was um, offering $25 entry to uh, any new racers in the women's field, fine print any new racers in any field that had fewer than 50 racers the year before. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we just wanted – last year we had fewer resources, but we wanted to do something just to encourage um, more women to be signing up for the race. That's super That's rad. Great. So, yeah, let's talk about why that's important to have those uh, incentives for people? I mean, I think as with many things in life and specifically in sport, just women are often or young girls are often just not encouraged to pursue athletics the way that um, the way that boys and men are. So we, we start off being um, under the impression that it's, it's just not something that's for us so much. So, I mean, you know, the women who are racing Mission Crit are all over 18. We are playing catch up a little bit, but being able to, it's a really small thing to be able to offer reduced entry, but it's something that um, I think more more so with people who are more local, if they just take a look and say, oh, you know, that that's something that I can afford. That's a place that's local. Um you know, if they're members of the community already, then they just know that that's going to be a fun thing to go and check out. And the barrier, the barrier to entry is just lower, lowered for them. So as I say, it's, I mean, it's something that's really small, but it's just, uh, it's a way that we can think of to encourage more women to, to come out and try because you've got to start somewhere. Absolutely. I agree 100%. 
What personal investment did you sort of have or experience with wanting to get more women into into like bike racing? Like, do you do you have like a personal story or anything? I my personal story. So I think bikes are cool and I think bikes are fun. I know James wanted to start Mission Crit because he just wanted to uh, throw a kick ass bike race. Um, I actually have been working with him on this. Um, our kind of like personal story is sort of tied up in the race itself because we were like sort of dating um, when the first mission crit happened. And when he told me he wanted to throw this bike race, I mean, bikes are cool and bikes are fun. My my sort of driving um, like passion here, though, is, is advocacy. Um, so what I see for mission crit is a way to... Um, a way to push for legislation, a way to push for inclusion um, through critical mass. So we make Mission Crit into an awesome kick-ass bike race that everybody wants to come and see. People think, oh, hey, bikes are cool and bikes are fun. We make it an environment where everybody is welcome. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, like economic bracket, gender, gender identity, um, whatever none of those things matter everybody's just welcome to come here and my hope is that people just feel embraced and welcomed in the community and then they get on their bicycles and then we have more people on bicycles and we have critical mass to be able to demand changes in the infrastructure which of course makes us healthier as people because we're out there exercising um and it makes us healthier as a city and just as you know, like human beings, because we're not, um, we're, we're less beholden to the almighty automobile. So it's pretty lofty, (laughs) but this is, this is the way that my thought process has been about this. And this is, uh, I mean, this is my kind of like ultimate motivation with working on this race. Getting more women on bicycles is part of the master plan. It's not, you know, it's not like my end goal, um, but it's definitely a big part of the master plan because, you know, women are 50% of the population of humans. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I think that's what's so cool and interesting about, uh, and I do want to get into this a little bit, but uh, that's what's so interesting about the fixed gear world because it's such a new sport that we can like do this from the beginning, you know? Um, and that's why I think what you're doing is so inspiring and so cool because right from the get go, it's like, as you were saying, when we talked originally about, you know, having a goal of one day, having the women's race be the headline race and having like equal payout, you know, and like all that kind of stuff. We have actually had equal payout since the inception of, uh, of mission crit women and mission crit men. The first race was just mission crit. Um, I don't actually think that we had any women race the first race, but the, the, uh, invitation was extended to anybody who wanted to race. Um, we split the field in the second year and the prizes have been equal. There was no, there was never any question about whether or not the prizes were going to be equal. They've been equal from day one. Um, and it is, our our end goal for for the race, um, as you were saying, is is to have it so that the women's field and the men's field will alternate year over year um, to be the headlining event. It's I mean it's still the way that things are done in sport is that the the men's um, event is typically the headlining event, and I I don't really understand why that is the case. Um, the reason that it's the case for Mission Crit still is just because of the numbers. Because if you've got a race that's got um, 75 is our capacity for racers on the race course at one time. So if the men have reached and exceeded those numbers, it just makes for a more exciting race because there are more athletes out there. So um, we're going to get to a point where we've got at least that number of women who are racing the race. And when that day comes, it will be year over year. Um, they'll, they'll, we'll be switching which of the events is the, the sort of like main event. And we, I mean, we kind of hope that that will, you know, mi- Mission Crit is growing. Hopefully it will be really big at some stage. But, um, you know, we, we want to be setting trends. Uh, and that that would definitely be a really wonderful one to to for us to be setting. 
And I mean, that also kind of falls in line with what's happening internationally right now with women's racing. There's a really strong and powerful movement to uh, provide equal payouts to professional races um, across the globe on UCI calendars. Um, and so it's kind of happening in in sort of like um, in concert with, you know, what everyone else is sort of talking about. I mean, I think fortunately for you and James, um, I mean, you don't have to worry about like viewership on television. I think a big part of what's happening for UCI races is like, you know, promoters are saying or the UCI are saying or whoever, oh, no one's watching this on television, but the women's races aren't even covered on television in a way that could even possibly get them advertising dollars. So they're sort of caught in this catch-22 um, so I think you guys don't have to deal with that, and that's really cool. You can just say, hey, we're going to blast this out, and we're going to use, you know, our savvy, like, social media skills and word of mouth, and, you know, you guys are doing um, some really good promotion right now. And so I think highlighting women, like, on your images and stuff, your sort of photos that you're putting out there is really cool. I think it's really rad, especially on your webpage. Like, when you pull it up, it's like, at least half of the photos are of, like, strong, rad racing women, you know? Yeah, that's intentional. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was important to me, I'm trying to, also just trying to find find imagery that's showing lots of different types of people. Yeah. So men, women, you know, like, all different colors of people and whatever. Yeah. And I think, um, so we women have always, like, been there. Like, the first person to win the Red Hook crit in Brooklyn was a woman. Um, so women have always been in fixed gear crits and women have always been in fixed gear culture in, you know, in New York City and San Francisco and like, you know, the mid 2000s and even early 2000s, like women were riding fixed and it was a big deal, you know, um, it was really fun. And th- when a woman would like place well, I remember when Tara Ainley got top 10 in one of the mash uh like alley cats she was super super stoked and it was so rad to see her up on stage with all these dudes and she rode a fixed gear i'm not sure if it was brakeless or not but you know she was up there mixing it up and we've always had women mixing it up um but what i think uh that you're doing and james are doing that's really special is you have this uh, intentional gender inclusivity statement on your website, um, which I'm not sure if it was in response to what happened last year with a community member in Oakland who, like, made some shitty statement about uh, a, tr- a transgendered racer signing up as a woman, but his son not being able to sign up and join like the women's field or something. It was it was a flap, and you know people got pissed, and this guy eventually like. You don't see him around anymore because he made this terrible statement on the internet. But now you and James have intentionally included people. Like, can you talk about that? Yeah. Um, so the the gender statement was actually um, in large part thanks to that community member who felt as though she was being targeted. Um, I spoke with her directly when this... It was a parent of a racer who was underage um, last year who was... Um, upset that his son could not participate and he had actually entered his son in the women's field illegally the previous year. Um, And then he had just made some inappropriate comments about a trans athlete who had been racing um, along, like alongside his son. And this person was, you know, understandably upset about it, but she was wonderful to talk to about it because she she just gave me a lot of insight into um, ways that we at Mission Crit could open up the language we were using and be more explicit about our desire to, um, to foster inclusivity. So that statement, um, I know that uh, speaking with her about it last year, she didn't want any recognition, but if you're listening, thanks a ton. That was so helpful. And again, we've, uh, we, we shortened it a little bit this year, but we needed to release it um, a couple days ahead of uh, a couple days ahead of registration, just to to reinforce um, in in the community that you know every everyone needs to come out and don't 
there's nothing stopping you. You shouldn't feel like anything is stopping you from coming out regardless of, of anything. <laughs> and I think that's really great um, because there, there is like a uh, coded language that cis people don't think about and they don't like, it's not something that they are either aware of because it's not part of their life or they're just not uh, opening their mind to all the possibilities, right? They're, they're blinders. Um, so like super duper rad. I saw it and I was very like blown away. Um, and I thought it was like, you guys put some work into it and thought, well, yeah, we're trying to, um, yeah, just thinking of a lot of different initiatives to just make it super clear that, that everyone should come out to this thing. Another thing that we're really excited about this year is that we are um, going to be working with Gays OK. This is an organization out of Europe that started as a way to encourage inclusivity in the uh, bike messenger community. So they sell fun um brightly colored, eye-catching designs and accessories, uh, t-shirts, cycling caps, and um, part of the profits for the sales for those um, products go toward Outright International, um, which is an organization that addresses human rights violations and abuses against LGBTQ people, and Rainbow Railroad, which is an organization that helps LGBTQ people escape violence and persecution in their home countries. So there's going to be, yeah, lots of, uh, lots of rainbow on site at Mission Crit. And um, when you pick up your Mission Crit t-shirt, you should also uh, check out the, the Gaze OK merch and grab some of that as well. That Absolutely. is super legit. I love it. I'm so, the thing is that's so cool about six year racing right now is since it's such a new sport. Again, I kind of said this before, but just like it's not going to take 100 years for people to be included. <laughs> I mean, we... you think about like, like you think about like road cycling and stuff and it's just taken so long and it's finally starting to get recognition a little bit, you know, but like you said, it is kind of stuck in a rut. Whereas like fixed gear racing is at this very new sport that's growing significantly. And it's right at a time when we can, make the choices to do all these things and to support all these organizations. So seeing something like Mission Crit, what you guys are doing is just really inspiring to me. I actually hadn't even thought of that, the like new sport, so clean slate sort of thing. That's super valid though. I'm going to start using that in some of my pitches to sponsors. <laughs> Put it in your <laughs> That's boiler a boiler plate. Yeah. Building from the ground well, up. Yeah, I was just thinking of that because I was listening to the cycling podcast uh, and they have their like Femina episodes and they were kind of talking about that, just like how there wasn't even like a road, a women's road race until the late 90s or something like that, like as far as like UCI road racing goes. Wow. I think, yeah, it was like, it, That's dumb. it was shockingly, yeah, it was shockingly recent and they, and like you were saying, it's still a struggle to get advertising dollars, and it's like they say it's because people aren't watching it, but then they again, don't like even put said, it on TV. <laughs> exactly. How can people watch it if it's not on TV? <laughs> so, um, I definitely hope as as this sport grows, uh, I just love seeing that there is um, such rad organizations that are like. And just seeing Mission Crit, like, attract so many racers this year, which we should get into, into the 2018 race, because uh, me and James talked a lot about, like, what's going on on the men's side, so we should definitely, like, talk about what's going on on the women's side uh, and what it's looking like this year as far as competition goes, who's already registered, like, that kind of stuff. I think Katie's going to be the best person to speak to this, because she's a lot more plugged into who's hot on the race scene. I know that I'm just really excited about Tegan Cochran um, coming down. She's uh, the three-time Canadian National Track Championship, or champion, sorry, and uh, sorry, Tegan, the reason, the only reason is because you're a fellow Canadian. Um, but <laughs> stoked that you're coming down. Represent. That's super-duper legit to get someone 
who has those palmeras to come and join your race to to believe in the race enough to feel like it's worth their time to travel to spend the money and to say like yeah that looks like a lot of fun like that's awesome you guys are doing it right yeah i think uh sorry we should talk about athletes but another another thing that um just i guess for me that's really fun working on the race is so our race is going to be compared to red hook because it's going to be compared to red hook like you know that's that's where this like uh genre of racing has like kind of sprung up from um but one one thing that we one, one of the things that um we're hoping to differentiate ourselves from them is that um we really want to maintain a hold on the culture um the roots and like bike messenger culture and also like local community culture um and have the vibe of this being an athletic event but then also uh have a really strong vibe of this being about like hanging out and like cool art and i don't know kicking it with your friends totally like i can (laughs) totally speak to that as a former san francisco bike messenger and someone who rode a fixed gear around a lot in the bay like the kick it culture, the like run what you brung culture, the like, you know, familia vibe, it's strong and it's super, super fun. Um, so to preserve that and even there's like a style too, right? There's like we called it Tark, like a super Tark style with a lot of like flashy anno and like and now you can see that sort of preserved through a lot of the local builders like uh, low bikes low is still has like a very like bay vibe to it with their color schemes it's like super good and even state bikes like you know the the sort of track scene moved down to san jose and like you know all those kids down there with all their like anodized parts and like matching color schemes and colorways and stuff like it's pretty cool so i mean the the racing here and like the women's race here i'm really excited to announce it and i'm really excited to see who shows up um some racers that i'm really excited about are um sydney richardson she's gonna come up from los angeles she was down or she lived here in the bay and then she moved to los angeles for a job but i talked to her at a party maybe two months ago and i asked her if she was going to come up and she said yeah and I asked her if she was going to try to win. <laughs> and she was like, that's all I've been training for ever. S-. And I was like, how long have you been training to like to win? Like, how long has that been your goal? And she was like, oh, ever since Joe beat me last year. But also <laughs> always, right? I don't know if you um, caught word of this, but last year's finish was uh, amazing for two two reasons. So it was amazing because Joe Celso um, pulled away from the peloton and then just soloed for what felt like three quarters of the race maybe the whole race it was impressive no one could catch her she was gone and then the duel for second and third it was a mix-up between so no there was second was christina peck she came in behind joe i think right and then third um it was a battle to the line between sydney richardson and veronica volak and they They used to be teammates on the road, and Veronica had just signed with East London Fixed, and she was doing the the fixed gear circuit, the the Red Hook circuit, and um, so she was training a lot and getting ready for Fixie Month, or I guess she was already in it. No, Fixie Month is April, right? Yeah. So she was, like, getting ready for Fixie Month, you know, and um, Sydney was super strong. She was, like, you know, fresh off of a really good track season the year prior, and so they traded like third and fourth fourth and third back and forth you know the whole race and then the final (laughs) the final lap they both came to the line and it was like head to head wheel to wheel and like i was calling the race and like in terms of front wheels veronica totally had it but in terms of like timing chip on the helmet sydney just got her helmet in ahead and so like they both finished at the same time (laughs) but sydney got the like the the faster time right but oh my gosh it was like it was super intense and it was so exciting and i mean i was way more excited watching that race than than the men's race for sure it was super cool so this year i'm really really excited to see how sydney's been training and how she's gonna do and if she's gonna like come and try and 
unseat Joe and try and get that first position because I mean it's really hard to beat Joe. It's it's just really hard. I I haven't seen her like in the Bay Area like when she goes to race she like shows up. <laughs> she's won a uh, mission crit for the past two years and those those are the years that she's raced and she's taken it both years. So she's got um, part of our. Our first place uh, prize is a custom frame build from Low Bicycles. So, Jo has got herself a couple of lows. Um, <laughs> it will definitely be interesting to see if she's going to come back in because that would be a. Uh, we're signed on for three years with Low. Um, so, it would be interesting if she if she takes all three of them. I mean, after two years of winning, like, that's, that's a really. I mean, that sort of gets in your head uh, when you win you know, consecutively, and you have to go back to a race and defend your title in a sense. And then, like, you know, and then people begin to, like, keep you in their mind, and they tend to sort of, like, race towards you. And, you know, it just gets a little bit more intense um, mentally, and then that sort of translates physically. So maybe it's hers. Maybe it's not. I'm so excited. Um, Another (laughs) sort of dark horse that's going to be out there from the Bay is um, Evie Williamson. Um, there's a little sound. That's okay. I'm sorry. I have a million alarms on my phone. I turned the ringer off, though. That's okay. okay. Oh, thank you. Um, Evie or Evie Williamson, um, she is racing with Jack Roo right now, and she is on Chrome Jack Roo with Joe Celso, and she's been killing it. If she doesn't have her two upgrade, I think she's going to have her two upgrade in road racing soon. And so I'm just really, really excited to see how Evie shows up. I'm not sure if this is going to be her first mission crit or not. I think it might be. Um, But that's one of my dark horse picks for, uh, if not winner, then definitely top three. Podium. Yeah, totally podium. Um, Other people that we have, uh, I see... So Veronica is returning. I'm not sure if she's still racing with East London Fixed and what her schedule is for the rest of the year. I know she has a coach, and she's been working hard. I know Sydney also asked after her when we, when Sydney and I were talking. She's like, oh, how's Veronica doing? Like, what's her training like? (laughs) And I was like, well, I can't tell you what her training's like, but, I mean, she's working, so that should be really exciting. And then uh, we have, who else? Um, Let's see. Oh, Kim Nonstop is coming through. Um, did Kim come last year? Kim came last year. Yep. She came the year before as well. She's just so rad. She also came, uh, came up for the, um, Red Bull Bay climb. That's right. She won it. She took it. Did she? Yep. Wait, did she win the, what category did she win? Cause there were two, there was oh. road bike and there was track bike. I feel like it was the track bike one. Yes. Yep. She won track bike. Yeah. And then Hannah Mwagi, M- Mugi, I think it's Mugi, that DNA cycling pro kit. Um, super pro woman uh, won the road race. But yeah, Kim's coming back. So, I mean, also also a podium pick. Also a podium pick. All right, maybe let's let's do our, our, our podium picks. Oh my gosh. This is a bad one for me. I was just thinking that I really like... Because uh, <laughs> Christina Peck, I think, has been second place for the past two years. I really like that because I just... I feel like Christina just kind of like kicks it and then comes out to Mission Crit and kicks everyone's ass. <laughs> She's so awesome. She's so, so fast. It'll be interesting because she's no longer a bike messenger now. She started grad school and and doing uh, human work, regular human work, rather than superhuman bike messenger work. Mm -hmm. Um, So it'll be interesting to see how the rest has affected her and how she's managed to, like, maintain a training schedule with with a job and school and stuff. But, yeah, she, she is so incredibly fast. She was in Chicago, and she kicked everyone's ass in Chicago. Before that, she was in the Bay and kicked everyone's ass here. Then she came back and kicked everyone's ass still. I'm excited. But top three, I'm going to go with... Um, I'm going to put Joe back on the podium somewhere anyways. What? I mean, come on. Like, <laughs> yeah. I think there's probably a pretty good chance. I'm going to um, I'm gonna suggest that uh, that that Tegan will, will be on the podium as well. Yeah. I don't think I'm well versed enough to like place people in one, two, three, but I would suggest that both of them will be up there. That's a good point. Tegan, I think is going to come on the podcast soon too, so I'm excited to Yay. talk to her. 
and because uh, I talked to Adam from Stanridge for a while the other day, and so I got really stoked from talking with him to see how she does. I'm, yeah, I would put her on the podium. I mean, multiple multiple national champions. Like they don't give you a national championship for nothing. So I think you guys are probably right. I would. I would. I think I'm going <laughs> to go with um, Kim nonstop on top. And then I'm going to go with Joe Celso second. And then I'm going to go with Tegan third. I think I'm, I think, I think I'm going to stick with that. Dark horse, Evie Williamson takes it all. (laughs) Dark horse. Mm. Well, we are up to, I think, 35 women who are registered. So last year it was uh, 20, it was either 20 or 21. We are... We've almost got a trend of doubling the registration every year, and we set a goal for 40 women registering this year. So any of you, anybody who wants to race in the women's field, get your ticket. Help us exceed our goals. Five more people. That's all yeah. we need. And at $25, because once April 1st hits, the registration price goes up to 40 mm. So get it while it's like regular, you know, it's like this, the price of a movie and a beer. I don't know. For $25, you can come home with a custom-built low bicycle, $2,000, a bunch of other amazing shit from Machines for Freedom, Chrome, Nog, everything that's great. Tons and tons of Maybe prizes. you can pick yourself up a, a prime prize while you're at it. I mean, I have always said that the Alley Cats and the like local community racing always had way better prizes than like the sanctioned U- USA cycling races. Oh yeah, you like win a bottle of wine at like one maybe of the, one of the sanctioned road races is like here's a <laughs> like 3 375 mil bottle of wine is your prize. Yeah, or here's a water bottle with three packets of goo inside. And it's it's great. They work hard to try and get their sponsorship stuff, but it often gets diverted to the men's races and, like, the 20 Masters men's races that they have. But these races, like the Alley Cats and the unsanctioned, like, big big races like these, they're great because there are so many prizes, and you're going to get something cool. And if you win, you're going to get, like, thousands of dollars worth of cool prizes but also literally thousands of dollars our cash prizes across the preems and um both of both men's and women's fields are over ten thousand dollars this year so and the top of the podium is two thousand dollars a check with your name on it for two thousand dollars from mission crit so that's like way better than a 375 milliliter bottle of wine no matter where in napa you got it yeah (laughs) here here that's amazing So you get the two thousand dollar check, and you get like a twenty five hundred dollar bike frame. Five thousand dollar <laughs> bike frame. Yeah, these are 5, these are low bicycles. It's like a custom frame. It also doesn't have to be. Um, some people wonder if it's like uh, going to be a fixie build. It's whatever build you want. Andrew Lowe will build you whatever bicycle you want. That's incredible. It's pretty rad. And it's not yeah. even like partial payment, <laughs> right? It's like full free. It's full free. <laughs> wow. You have to get it have to get it built within six months but that's the only uh that's the only caveat that's amazing um that's super duper duper amazing i just want to shout out that there are a couple teams that are like bringing squads and crews and showing up here also right we've got a lot of people from southern california the swat team and the engine 11 team are coming up from southern california do you know of any of their like crews of people who are I, coming through? I know that there's a lot of excitement ab- around um, Specialized Rocket Espresso having their team come out, um, and there's also a lot of uh, excitement around um, the Stanridge Rafa team, um, the Hunter Brothers. They're actually uh, they're I think we mentioned this in the the Mission Crit um, podcast for uh, Save the Track Bike, but um, they have done all of the the art. For the race this year, and they're uh, they're bringing their team up from Australia again, so that's going to be pretty rad. Holy smokes, that's so cool! Yeah, it's really exciting. And now we've got a bunch of uh, all of our stuff has cool like Hal Hunter tattoo art style graphics on it. So, oh yeah, are they bringing any women with them? Um, they had talked about that they they had one woman who was a younger woman, maybe I think she was like sixteen or seventeen. I'm not entirely sure whether she has registered, but I should know that cross our fingers because yeah. australia i mean australia is the land of anna Mears. like 
Anna Mears is one of the most winning track bike racers in the history of women's track bike racing. And their track bike program, their, um, sorry, I should say track racing program in Australia is is amazing. One of the greatest rivalries of women's track racing is Anna Mears and Victoria Pendleton, which kind of all went down um, in the like 2000s and like the mid to late 2000s. And it's just like super duper badass. Um, Bring them up. Yeah. So Australia has no excuses, man. Bring up your ladies. Uh, We also have Foxy Moxie represented. Um, Adina Butler is going to be racing this year. She's coming off a couple injuries that she sustained. Um, she did some uh, roller derby, and she was kicking ass at it, and then she got a couple really gnarly breaks. Um, and so she's been basically recovering for a really long time, for a couple years now. And she signed up, and she's going to be out on out at the line, and she's going to be racing for Foxy Moxie, which is this really great team that I think is in its second year. Um, the team was put together by Anna Schwinn and Rachel McKinnon. McKinnon, Rachel McKinnon over in North Carolina, I think. Um, and the the race team is ex- it's um, a trans inclusive team, or what is it? It's a it's a women's race team with a special sort of like intention of like building trans presence in in the women's race field. Um, and so that'll be really exciting to see. I'm I'm super stoked that like we have that representation on the West Coast too. So there was an- another online controversy, awesome, um, around uh, these socks that are by Handlebar Mustache Cycling, which are called Speak Out socks, and they have the trans flag on them. So I learned about this controversy where someone, I think he was called Mike, was just you know being an a hole about having trans flag on socks and saying nobody who rides bikes is even trans why are you being all like supportive and nice or I don't really know what his point was but um so we caught wind of that and we were like well I guess we're gonna have to contact handlebar mustache and sell some of the speak out socks so we'll be doing that and um still deciding I think we're probably gonna donate the the proceeds to foxy moxie though that that seems like a, a good spot for for us to kick some cash towards. I love that you guys were just like, oh, you don't like this? You're going to be a bigot? Great. We'll give them more money. Yeah. Thanks for telling us about this. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your, your assholery has now been turned into. Uh, you, well, I mean, you know, this person doesn't doesn't see trans people present in uh, in the cycling community, so we're gonna give some money to an organization that helps make trans people more present. So, hopefully, uh, yeah, he'll get it that that trans people are in cycling and that they have a place like everyone else. And this is the second year in a row that you've actually taken. Uh, someone's anger, bigotry, and ignorance, and turned it into inclusivity and like giving women your money, right? And like supporting the trans community in a in a real way beyond just words, right? Because we can all say words and say like, "Oh, I support inclusivity and I support women," and you know, I'm an ally or whatever. But until you actually give people your money. And shut people down when they say terrible things about your friends. Like, it means nothing, right? Until you take that action. So you guys are doing it. And that's awesome. It's pretty easy. I mean, just got in. I mean, it just doesn't. Like, we've got a merch tent. These things have fun, nice colors on them. They make us feel, you know, it's it's a nice thing for us to do. But honestly, like, it's a it's a nice feeling. And it still serves, as I say, my, my ultimate goal of, like, cyclist world domination. If we're going to take over the world, it needs to be as many of us as possible. Come one and all. Yeah, and it's like, you know, if I am here, like, my my homies should be here too. And, and just, like, just general humanity, right? Like, if I get to enjoy and have fun in this thing, like, all all humans, all, all, pre, ugh, all humans should have fun too. We all deserve it. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> I'm so excited for what you guys are doing. Is there anything else you need to touch on before we head out? 
I feel yeah. I feel pretty good. I don't think I have much more to say. I'm really excited to be um, uh, announcing the race for the second year in a row. And I love the women's race because it's so exciting to watch. And these are my friends who are racing. And I've, I've raced with them since they started racing bikes, right? Like, I was racing bikes with Christina Peck when she moved to San Francisco for the first time and was, like, just getting fast and was like, oh, I can – I'm fast. Like, <laughs> I can win stuff, you know? And I watched Veronica Volok, like, you know, as, like, an 18-year-old little, like, baby something, like, come on through the ranks, and now she's, you know, racing internationally – and so it's exciting for me because I have personal investment and I have relationships with these women. And and it makes me so proud to see them do well and to watch them just be total shredders, right? To be such badasses on the course. Like, it just brings a tear to my eye. I love it, um, you know? And, and to see people through their, like, you know, through their evolutions, like, you do you and you are like speaking your truth and you are saying to the world like look at me now and fuck off like (laughs) i love it uh i would i i will have one last last thing to say and that is um that i james and i feel really grateful actually to katie um for announcing for us last year and again this year i think she I think we met at a cyclist nutrition thing. It was the women. It was um, a women in racing uh, panel, like speaking event or panel at the sports basement. And this was, I think, a month before the race last year. And we didn't know who our announcer was going to be. But talking to Katie, um, she was like, I'll do it. I know all the women on the circuit. And I was like, well, that sounds like it's going to be really important. So I think... um, that's actually another thing that helps to raise the profile of the women's race is that, you know, we've, we've got, um, Fergus who his, his knowledge is more, um, in the men's scene. And so Katie's got knowledge of, of who is racing in the women's field. So none of that is going to get lost. Um, and, and that's thanks to her. So definitely really grateful to her for being on board again this year. Thank you. It's my pleasure. So thank you both so much for coming on the podcast. It's my pleasure. You're welcome. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Save the Track Bike. Find us on Instagram at Save the Track Bike, Save the Track Bike.com. Shout outs to FixGearCrit.com. And this was hosted and produced by me, Joshua LeBure. Thank you all so much for the support. Go leave us a five-star review wherever you're listening. And I'll see you next time.